What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So I'm guessing this is going to be backstory, history. Mm -hmm. We did do a video uh, about the story a long, long time ago. But this is simple history, so we do it in a simple fashion, animated, yeah. and it is interesting. Yeah. Obviously we know what the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is. Yeah, we know a bit about it, don't we? We've done, we've done a few videos on it, so I think we definitely need to visit one day, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we're going to learn a little bit more about it today, or at least refresh our mind quite a bit. Yeah. But it's a different perspective telling of the story, so there will definitely be bits which we either missed out or looked over mm -hmm. one the other, and vice versa. Uh, if you want to check out some boys, the link is in the description. There is a free trial to sync for an ad which we have skipped, so if you want to check it out, the link is in the description. But wait after this video. Yes, please. Why not? What did we do yesterday, or the day before? We did Princess Bride. We did Princess it Bride. Was yes no, it wasn't. It was day four. <laughs> I, I said yes, I did the exact same. Um, we did Princess Bride, didn't we? We did, it was a good movie. And it's on a page on now, so if you want to check out that full reaction, you can do. If you're waiting for the edited version, it'll be on the movie channel, hopefully by the end of the week. So, link in the description to our movie channel and our page, and we'd appreciate it. Right, are you ready to learn more about the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier? Again, huge respect to anyone in the military, all these, um, and I'm ready to be moved. This will be moving, won't it? Magellan TV has to offer. Click on the link in the description to try Magellan TV now. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the Silent Sentinels. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is at the Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington County, Virginia, across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C., and was erected in 1921 as an eternal resting place for the unknown American soldier killed in France during the First World War. We definitely need to it go. It was a monument to yeah. all those unknown American servicemen who died serving their country in the Great War. In the future, the United States of America were to become embroiled in other conflicts, such as World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. In these three wars, hundreds of thousands of American lives were lost. The identity of many of these fallen servicemen was never determined. They too were paid tribute by lying down bodies of unknown soldiers near their comrades from World War I. From then on, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier became a monument to the memory of all unknown servicemen who died fighting for the United States of America. More recently, they have built the Northwood Gratitude and Honor Memorial in Irvine, California, which remembers all of the fallen American heroes of the Afghanistan and Iraq oh, conflict wow, since 2003. That's the first time I've never heard about it no, either. I've never um, heard I imagine that is definitely worth a visit. So yeah. Just to pay respects, because mm -hmm. any day I know we're not American, but we've been on the same side. People, it's people's lives, and again, yeah. just anyone doing it so you can have free speech, you can you have the right to be free and stuff like that. It's just respect. Hundred percent. Like, oh, it's such, and um, yeah, I. It's just nice to pay respect, yeah. isn't it? The idea of building a monument to the unknown fallen soldiers arose after the First World War. During the war, the United States had lost over 130,000 servicemen. A great number of those men were buried far from their homes in special mass cemeteries in France near the battlefields where they had lost their lives. The number of those whose identity was unknown was not inconsiderate. I've been to it was a similar France. situation. Have you? Yeah, it was, for the, it was for the American soldiers because it oh, had the American flag up and everything and they were all like just the white crosses, you know, in the ground. Yeah. Um, but there's it's weird because you walk down the path and there's like hundreds, if not thousands. Like, Which is mad. On it? each it's... side of your yeah, leg. Yeah. And there's no like... They don't know who they are. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's, no, like it, it's mad. That many people have died and we don't know who they are. Not identified and stuff like that. It is awful, mm. isn't it? Absolutely awful. And I was like, I think what I was like other... 12. Maybe like 10. And 11, you still and remember still, it as well. And it's still like, I remember walking in it was still like, it felt really weird. Yeah. They're combatant countries. The French and British were the first to create tombs for the unknown soldiers in the memory of their fallen men. In France, the tomb was placed at the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. The unknown British soldier was buried inside Westminster Abbey. So oh, wow. the idea was adopted by other countries in Europe. I've not heard of it for the UK. In the United States, Brigadier General oh, William D. Funeral. Connor, who commanded the American troops in France during the war, advocated a similar idea after hearing of the French project. He proposed the idea to the Chief of Staff, General Peyton C. March, on October 29, 1919. But he dismissed the idea as it was thought that the Army Graves Registration Service would eventually identify all of the American dead, so there wouldn't be a need for such a memorial. 
On December 21, 1920, the New York Congressman Hamilton Fish Jr. introduced a resolution calling for the body of an unidentified American soldier who was killed in France to be returned back to the United States and to be put into a tomb to be specially built at the Memorial Amphitheater in the Arlington National Cemetery. Congress approved this measure on March 4, 1921. Arlington was already known as the burial place of the unknown American soldiers. Okay. The cemetery was established during the American Civil War on land that belonged to the Confederate General Robert E. Lee. The Union Army used it to bury 16,000 of its soldiers. After the war in 1866, the bodies of 2,111 unidentified soldiers killed at the Battle of Bull Run were reburied in a mass grave marked by a stone monument. Arlington was the perfect location for the new tomb. The question was, how would they select who should be buried inside of it? While waiting for congressional approval to build the tomb in March 1921, the United States already had 1,200 dead soldiers whose identities wow. were still being processed. That early. The That's army wanted to make sure that there wasn't the slightest possibility of the chosen unknown soldier's body being identified at a later stage. Eventually, in September 1921, four bodies were exhumed, one from each of the four American cemeteries in France. The bodies were inspected to confirm that the soldiers had died from combat wounds and there were no records of their identification. After the inspection, they put the bodies in caskets and sent them to Chalon-sur-Marne. Over there, the honor of choosing the body for the tomb was given to Sergeant Edward S. Younger, a highly decorated infantryman still on active duty. The day before, American and French soldiers moved the caskets around to make sure no one knew from which cemetery each of them came from. Okay, so it couldn't Sergeant change it Younger purpose. made his choice by placing a spray of roses on top of one of the caskets. The body of the unknown soldier was then placed in a sealed coffin and shipped to the States on board the USS Olympia. The other three bodies were buried in a cemetery near Paris. The unknown soldier's body arrived in Washington on November 9, 1921. It was displayed the following day in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda, where in just one day, 90,000 citizens paid their respects wow. to the unknown soldier. On November 11th, 1920... Like on, the video, on the last one, again, it was a couple of years ago, we watched it. it. There was a video of it like going out with all the crowds, yeah. wasn't it? And the thing is, as well, they could have, not knowing obviously they've done all this, they could have in theory just done a tomb and called it a monument for it. But the fact they've gone to these lengths to actually make sure there is one, just it, yeah. the, like the levels again of disrespect, yeah. because there actually is one. It could be any unidentified soldier, and exactly. he represents All everyone. And also, I imagine, I know there were graveyards, as like say, there were graveyards for the unidentified ones, but having this tomb for the people who have lost someone, knowing that could they've lost them at war, but they've not got identified, just having something special, like an actual yeah. head, like a proper gravestone head with text yeah. on Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not, not just a... Not just a... White cross in a... A white yeah. cross, pretty much. Yeah, you've actually got a head with a bit of text. It means... A, and you feel like it's a special thing for yeah. their loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, If that makes sense. It does make so sense. So, again, just the way we've gone about it, because it literally then could be anyone as well. It literally yeah, exactly. could be anyone. You don't know. It's not just a tomb and they're saying the idea of it. It actually is a tomb. There's somebody in there. Yeah, which is an identifier. If I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I like that they've actually gone full out properly yeah. on it. 21 on the anniversary of Armistice Day. The body was taken in a funeral procession from the Capitol to the Arlington Cemetery, where a state funeral ceremony was held. It got a proper funeral. A field well. artillery battery from the nearby Capitol Mall fired a salvo every minute during the procession. They paused only during the two minute period of silence at the beginning of the ceremony. Wow. Before it was laid in the tomb, President Warren G. Harding placed a Medal of Honor on the coffin. Admiral of the Fleet Lord Beatty also laid the Victoria Cross Medal on the coffin on behalf of King George V and the British public. The original tomb from 1921 consisted of only a three-level slab made of white marble. The tomb was projected to serve as a foundation for a bigger monument which was yet to be built. In 1926, Congress authorized the completion of the tomb by placing an appropriate monument on the existing foundation. A competition was held to design the structure and oh, was wow. won by sculptor Thomas Hudson Jones wow. and architect Lorimer Rich, who were awarded the contract to build the monument. The neoclassical monument in the shape of a sarcophagus was made of the finest and whitest American marble, the Yule marble. The monument was impressive with a height of 11 feet or 3.3 meters. 
It was 8 feet or 2.4 meters wide and 13 feet 11 inches or 4.2 meters long at the base. It is big the top it. had a width of 6 feet 8 inches or 2 meters and a length of 12 feet 7 inches or 3.8 meters. The weight of the entire tomb was an enormous 160,000 pounds or 80 tons. It makes sense because the mm -hmm. north and south panels of the monument were decorated with six inverted like wreaths separated with Doric pilasters. The initial idea was for the wreaths to represent the world of memories, but they later became the symbols of the six largest World War I battles in which the American forces fought. Okay. The east panel facing the city of Washington had a composition of three figures representing peace, victory, and valor, but also three allies from the war, the United States, France, and the United Kingdom. The opposite panel facing the amphitheater had an inscription carved upon it. Here rests in honored glory, an American soldier known but to God. The monument was mounted on the existing tomb in December 1931, giving it the appearance that we see today. In the early days, there were not any guards now. posted at the monument. It was only in 1925 that a unit was deployed to watch the monument during the day. In 1926, the monument was put under permanent 24-hour watch. There wasn't like any particular well. unit assigned for the though, duty that, at the time, but going. they all came from the army. Yeah, the literally, 1926 Almost still going. 100 years. Almost 100 years. Now let us know in the comments. I don't know if during COVID it potentially had a couple of days off. I don't know. I, I, I can't remember. I think I kind of remember hearing to that, but I might be completely wrong. I might mm. be making up. Please let us know in the comments and correct us on that. But either way, I mean, obviously that was different times, wasn't it? Um, but either, it's just mad, isn't it? Like so much respect. It Definitely. just, I think, just having the twenty-four hour guard because they're not actually guard. They're not guarding it from people. They're guarding it out of respect. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's for respect, I think. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. So let us know what you think. Let us know the actual answer to in the comments. I don't want to be spreading stuff if it's completely wrong. I just have a feeling I've read tomorrow, but I might be completely wrong. So please let us know. Branch of the armed forces. However, in 1946, the duty of guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier was permanently presented to the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment. Better known as the Old Guard, the 3rd Infantry was one of the oldest units of the U.S. Army and was responsible for performing all ceremonial duties in the capital and for protecting it in emergencies. Okay. Guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier is, however, the most honorable of all their duties. At the same time, it's one of their most onerous duties as it calls for nothing less than perfection. All members of the 3rd Infantry Regiment are eligible for the duty, which is carried out on a voluntary basis. In order to become a sentinel of the tomb, one must have an impeccable military record and pass rigorous tests and interviews. That makes sense. Those who meet the requirements are sent for intensive training with the goal of achieving perfection in every aspect of the sentinel duty. From the respect again, the isn't duty it? of a sentinel is highly stressful, as it's exposed to constant review and inspection in order to maintain the set standard. For this reason, many sentinels give up or are withdrawn from duty after only a few months. Wow. Those who remain in service for more than nine months are entitled to wear the sentinel badge permanently, an insignia in the shape of the tomb with laurels around and an inscription, Honor Guard. Apart from the badge, tomb sentinels are distinctive for the impeccable army dress blue uniforms and sunglasses they wear because of the bright reflection of the white marble. While on duty, sentinels protect the tomb by marching back and forth on a 63-foot or 19-meter rubber mat placed on a plateau west of the tomb. The and path that, has to be... From what we've seen on the clips, remembering it, the path is so worn. Yeah. And it just highlights. I imagine they've changed that path as well. How many times they do walk up and down. It just shows how much they're actually just going back, because they are doing it 24-7. It is so worn yeah, by footsteps, it's... and it just shows it again, doesn't yeah. it? It's mad crossed in exactly 21 steps, after which the sentinel makes a 21 second pause, turns around, makes another 21 second pause, and walks back in 21 steps. The symbolism of the number is connected to the 21 gun salute, the highest salute used in military ceremonies. All the time the sentinel keeps his weapon on his shoulder closest to the visitors as a gesture of protecting the tomb from all threats. If a visitor violates the restricted area, the sentinel brings his rifle to the front as a warning sign. If the warning fails, only then will he shout out a warning. Apart from that, the entire duty is performed in complete silence, hence the nickname, the Silent Sentinels. Which is a way to do it. Yeah. Guards are relieved every half an hour. 
In the ceremony of changing guards, an officer of the guard inspects the guard's uniform and weapons. During wintertime, guards change every hour, while on the night shifts, the change takes place every two hours. For 35 years, the tomb was a monument to the soldiers fallen in World War I only. In 1956, President Eisenhower signed a bill to honor the unknown soldiers killed in World War II and the Korean War in the same manner. True to the tradition, the internment ceremony that took place in 1958 was exactly the same one held in 1921. When choosing the remains of a World War II unknown soldier, one body was taken from the European theater of war and one from the Pacific. The Korean unknown soldier was chosen from among four bodies exhumed from the National Cemetery of the Pacific in Hawaii. Both unknown soldiers were awarded the Medal of Honor before their bodies were interred in the crypts on the plateau west of the tomb on May 30, 1958. The last unknown soldier to be interred at the site was one from the Vietnam War on May 28, 1984, Memorial Day. His body was laid in a new crypt placed between his comrades from World War II and Korea. Ten I years later, that. however... I mean, maybe, yeah, I, see, I didn't realize there were multiple in there. I didn't. I thought it was just one. I just thought it was a one from World War One. I. I didn't. It's awesome at doing mm. from other wars. And now, please correct me. I don't think we we'll have any more because we've got DNA now, really good. So if you ever find a body, you can DNA it, can't you? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is in the so comments. It's so much easier now to. to Definitely, I, I feel like there won't be another tomb of like there won't be another unknown soldier. No. I might be wrong in saying that, so please correct me. But I, I kind of got the impression there wouldn't be. No, and they're all num. Everything's. They're all well numbered. And yes. Tracked and... So let, let us know in the comments on that. Which I mean, that's a fantastic thing. It's awful that these soldiers obviously die, but it's great that they can be identified it's and stuff like that. Um, so that that will be the last ones in here. But obviously, they keep it for respect for the past, which is awesome as well, isn't it? Which they should do. Our independent awesome. research determined the probable identity of the soldier. A DNA test taken in 1998 positively identified the body as belonging to Lieutenant Michael J. Blassie. After his family expressed a wish to bury Blassie in his hometown, the body was exhumed and the crypt left oh, empty. Wow. From then on, it represented the memory of all those American servicemen whose bodies were never found. Even though it has no official name, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is the most iconic monument at the Arlington National Cemetery, reminding the nation of all those who gave the ultimate sacrifice in serving their country. We definitely need to go. Mm -hmm. I think that is the end of it. Oh, it's still, even though we've learned so much about it, it's still like, wow. Yeah, it literally is still like, wow. S seeing it, like, yeah, just actually seeing it again, remembering everything it means. And we definitely have to go and see mm -hmm. it one day, don't we? Yeah, 100%. Smash that like button if you enjoyed, guys. Smash the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.